had surgery soon speaking, how can I help? How's your anxiety? Doctor, you know I haven't been in a good place. I'm trying to get better and it's just hard. I think it's worth referring you to get this all checked. Yeah. And I think we need to do it urgently on, on a, what's called a cancer two-week wait referral. Ignore the behaviour you don't want to see again and reward the behaviour that you wish to encourage. It tickles. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's always tender. I had that breakdown. Yeah. Then I was made redundant. Yeah. And I found out this is happened ever since. It's all going downhill. Never, it never happens in once. No. Your appointment was at ten past ten. Ten past? Yep. I'm going to have to wait a long time to be seen. It is manic. With a bit of luck, I'll be running to time, but I won't guarantee it. Evelyn will see That's how we go. That's what my blood pressure does. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> Sandra, take a seat, darling. I'm just going to speak to the doctor. Yeah, because I'm worried. Yeah, that's fine, my darling. We didn't arrive you. So it's our fault, but I will just speak to the doctor. Hello. Hi, is that Serena? Yes, hello. Hello, darling. Did you get my screen message? Yeah, I've just replied because I was with a patient. OK, she's been sat here two hours. Two hours? They, well, she came to book at 8 o'clock and then they forgot to put her in. Forgot to arrive her. So she'd been in the waiting room from 8 o'clock? Yes. So uh, whose fault is it? Ours. OK, I'll see her then. OK. OK, thanks, bye. bye. She's going to see you. She's going to call you now, darling. OK. I've had a, I've had a horrible morning. Where have I? I made a mistake this morning. This morning I made a mistake. Because obviously when, when it's so busy and we're booking in patients... Sandra Temrowska. Hello. It's Dr. Hyder. Come and have a seat. I'm sorry you had to wait so long. And how can I help you today? I just have some infection in my nose. OK. And I have some in my face as well. So okay. how many weeks pregnant are you? Seven or eight. OK. So any fever at all? No. OK. <clears throat> Cough? No. No. OK. That's all right. So let's just look at the back of your throat to start with. Let's ah. just do a big ah. Yeah, OK, so it's quite red. Yeah, because I'm vomiting. Oh, you're vomiting because yes. of the pregnancy as well. Yeah. Let's have a look in your ear. OK. A little bit red, actually. Yeah. So both of the eardrums look like there's some pressure behind them as well. Oh. Now, that can sometimes be if there's an infection going on here. Oh. Can I listen to your heart and breathing? Yes. OK, you're OK, and no, it's fine. I just want to feel your face. Is pain across here at all when I'm pressing? No. no. What about across the front of the head? No. But you're feeling congested up here? Yeah, just here, like here. Right, <clears throat> OK. When you blow your nose, what colour is it? Green, mm, white? Green. green. Oh, it is green. OK, your chest is all clear. OK. All right, so I think it's coming from the sinuses, the infection. Come and have a seat. <laughs> Are you allergic to any antibiotics? No. no. So we could give you some amoxicillin, which is OK in pregnancy. OK. okay. But can you give me any cream for that or something? Let's have a look inside. So it's feeling very sore, is it? And it's really... Yes, yeah. Yeah, I can give you some cream for that as well. Yeah. yeah. So that's your antibiotics and that's the cream. OK. OK. And then come back and see us if you're not feeling better. OK, thank All you. All right, I'm sorry you had to wait so long. <laughs> Okay. Take care, then. Bye-bye. Hello. Henry, come. 
Come in, take a seat. Thank you. How are we doing? Yeah, actually, uh, he's coughing. Right. Uh, all night. Yep. All night he was crying mm -hmm. with the runny nose and coughing very badly. And mm -hmm. he vomiting as well. He bring all milk out. Yeah. So that's why we worried about it. Okay, because... we'll have a listen to his chest, shall we? Yeah, and, that's fine. And see what it's like. Let's have a quick take of his temperature. Oh, that's a smile, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All <laughs> night he was crying and now he's smiling. Absolutely. Well, there we go. There's a cough as well. So we're going to have a listen to that. Um, OK, if you just pop his head to the side slightly yeah. and we'll just try this uh, temperature first. OK, so no temperature, which is good news. We'll have a listen to that chest before he starts crying. <laughs> oh, you're not going to cry here, not when you look so happy. Is that right? Don't you remove the... That's fine. Oh, is that right? OK, so his chest is nice and clear. He does have a little wheeze to it, OK? Yeah, sometimes when he wheezes, it feels like yeah. when he breathes... You can hear a slight yeah. wheeze at the moment. Now, OK, so let's talk about the good signs. OK, the good signs are that his breathing is nice and slow. He's not panting. He's not you know, panting away yeah. very fast mm -hmm. and rapidly, which would be a bad sign. Mm -hmm. He's not grunting when he breathes. You know, <coughs> Like yeah. that, that wouldn't be yeah. good. He does have a little wheeze, so there must be a little bit of narrowing of his airways to some mm -hmm. degree. All he's got at the moment is a probably a little viral infection that's given him a slight wheeze, OK? Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is give him... <laughs> you know, this is, he's, he's only tiny, but that we can use an inhaler to try and help that. What I'm going to see if I can do is get one of the nurses just to show you how to use that. All right. <laughs> OK? Have... Two seconds. Let me see if I can uh, convince one of my colleagues. Yeah. I've got to see a doctor. Um, I'd like to see Dr Morrison. Right, well, actually, your doctor is Dr Ward. That's Dr Ward, is it? Okay. It's a good name for a doctor, isn't it? Yep, absolutely. You haven't got a nurse surgery, have you? <laughs> I mean, don't worry if he gets a bit upset and, you know, if he's crying when you're trying to give him it, cos sometimes that's better, cos as they're crying, they're <laughs> taking deeper breaths. Deep breath, so, yeah. so it's... The medicine um, goes in. Yes. And pop it in. Okay, right, so we'll just see how he takes it. What's that? Good boy. Oh. That's, that's it, good boy. So this is just to help with the cough whilst yeah. he's coughing so much. Oh, All right, yeah, OK, then. Much. All right, then. Take care. Bye-bye. Terence Edwards. I'm fine, how are you? Let's see. Thank you. That was a good result yesterday? Yeah, a brilliant result. Wasn't it? Yeah. Didn't, I didn't see day. that coming. Made no. your day, good. Made my day. Good, good. How are you? Not too good, cos go they cast me with my heart failure now, Chris. OK. Um, my feet are still swelling. Uh-huh. Um, I'm still out of breath a lot, and I'm still coughing in the mornings. Right, OK. And I'm finding it very hard to walk at long distances now. OK. So who's looking after you? Is it the hospital or nobody? Is it nobody. Is. Okay. <laughs> Who would you like to look after you? You. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody that heart attack or stroke in a young age? My dad had a triple heart bypass about two years ago. With the heart failure, how are things with that? Are you managing to, to get around and, and not be breathless too much? I just have to not to think about it. Yeah, OK. Put this analogy as a boiler system in a house. Your heart is a pump, like a boiler. They say if you don't open, the pressure will be so high that your boiler will break down. It has three heart attacks. I have, yeah. Oh, gosh. Like it's still be here, really. The other thing that it shaped me is that, that you have an irregular heartbeat. I found out every time I was running, my heart was going insane. So, what so I had a heart ab um, ablation. And you're cured. That's been fixed. That's been very, fixed. very, very pleased with that. Hooray. Excellent. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> So what do you understand by, by the word heart failure? I don't know. No one's explained nothing okay. to me, Chris. Nothing. So we all get heart failure. Yeah. If you, if even the fittest athlete runs down the road, eventually they will get out of breath, and that's because the heart can't pump the oxygen yeah. around the, the body enough. In, in your case, you're getting it short of breath at a very early stage of, of, uh, of exercise. And this is because your heart is enlarged and it can't pump as efficiently, so it can't get the blood around the heart, right. around the body as well as it would like to. Yeah. When you go to bed at night, you lie down, all this water that's collected in your ankles drains back 
because your feet are up yeah. to the heart. And then there's too much fluid in the blood circulation right. and, and, in the, and in the lungs. And so it tends to collect in the lungs and it makes you cough. Yeah. And it makes you feel short of breath at right. night. Yeah. So one of the things we need to do is to, is to reduce the amount of fluid in your body. One of the ways we treat heart failure is giving patients diuretics or water tablets, which reduces the amount of fluid in the body by increasing the amount that we pass out in urine. This therefore gives uh, less total fluid in the body, reducing the strain on the heart to get the blood pumped around the tissues and back to the heart. The other thing is to try and make your heart beat more efficiently. Yeah. Now you're on some tablets for that, but there's another tablet we ought to give called a beta blocker, right. which we know helps your heart to beat more efficiently. Okay. Now you have to be careful yeah. with these. If you give them a too high a dose, it makes the heart slow down so much it doesn't beat enough to get the blood yeah. around, and it makes the heart failure worse. Right. So we start off at a very low dose and work our way up. Okay, Chris, yeah. Okay? Yeah. We're going to increase the doses until we get you feeling better. Okay, Chris, yeah. That's Is that fine. okay? That's fine, yeah. Fine. I had that breakdown. Yeah. So I was under the Dr. Sultan for that now still. Yeah. Then I was made redundant. Yeah. Then I found out this is happened ever since. It's all going downhill. Never, it never happens in ones. No. Can I see you first thing next Monday morning? OK, Chris. Could you thanks. also, please, for the end of this week, have a blood test done? Yeah. Just Thank you, Chris. Okay, yes. Take care. Yeah, all the best. Yeah. See you next Bye, week. Yeah. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye, Chris. So it's something for his skin, is it? Uh, yes, please. Uh... Uh, that's the one. So, memetazone? Yeah. That's, that's a yeah. really strong, strong steroid cream. Yes, sir. This is not something that we would ever put on repeat for okay. a child. Mm -hmm. Importantly, what we need to assess is how is his eczema? His skin is fine, if you can have a look over here. Everything is... So, you can see there's some redness yeah. just it's here, really, can't yeah. you? Kind of classical eczema, dry skin. Yeah. How about his arms? Arms? It's uh, here. Oh, wow. OK. How about legs? Oh, I like your trainers. <laughs> OK. So that looks quite sore, doesn't it? You can see he's been yeah, scratching yeah. at it. OK. What's his bath time routine like? His uh, bath time routine is like two or three, two or three times a, a day, uh, a week. OK, so you, it, not having bath, bath every day. Time. We know that things like soaps, shower gels, bubble baths, mm -hmm. they all make the skin dry. He doesn't use, he any, doesn't use any of those. That's perfect. What we could give you is a tub of cream, mm -hmm. um, and when you, he is having a bath or a shower, you can rub that in all over the body okay. and then just wash it off. Twice a day is good. Mm -hmm. It would be even better if it was three times or four times okay. a day. Here's the crucial bit. Mm -hmm. Eczema is a dry skin condition. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you chuck moisture, moisture, moisture at dry skin, mm -hmm. It's going to be perfect. Okay, okay. It will work. Mm -hmm. That means then you don't need the steroids. Yeah. Because okay. we are really reluctant as doctors mm -hmm. and clinicians to mm -hmm. give steroids, especially in a child mm -hmm. as young as Nirmit, okay. who uh, his skin is not going to be like your skin. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's going to be thinner. Mm -hmm. And steroid side effects are that they make the skin even right. thinner. Yeah. So these should be reserved mm -hmm. only to use when there are flare-ups yeah. of eczema. Okay. I'm really concerned about how strong that is. Okay, no worries. Um, and at the moment, actually, his skin's not that bad. Okay. It doesn't need the, the really strong steroid. <laughs> so I'm going to keep those three things on repeat. So Cetraben will be on repeat, soap substitute tub on repeat, and an antihistamine to drink once a day. Uh, and those, that's his regular treatment. Okay. That's the time to come and see us, and we assess the need okay. for steroids. That's fine. All right? And it looks like we can send this prescription electronically straight, just straight, to the pharmacy. Straight. I'll do that right away. Thank you very much. You're nice welcome. To nice to meet you too. Come on, Take man. care. Say bye. Bye bye, young man. <laughs> bye bye. Have a nice evening. Be good. Enjoy. Take, Take care. care. You too. Why do people have paracetamol prescription? I don't know. It's 16p in shops. But it costs us like £10. Well, not us, but you know what I mean. Oh my God. I've had a bad morning. I've oh, got. I can't <coughs> breathe properly. <coughs> I was going to say, is it your chest or your stomach? My I couldn't chest. tell. I couldn't tell. I, I mean, I, can't, I don't know. What, I've been having... Let me see. I've been having, like, in the night time, like, food is stuck in my... here. Yeah. But I've been coughing. I've been taking my inhaler. Yeah. And I know I'm really chesty at the moment. OK. Yeah. Anything coming up? Yeah. What kind of...? Brown. How's your anxiety? Um, don't know how my butt... my moments, but don't feel too bad at the moment, but I'm... Anxious about certain things, so I've got a lot of changes going. Yeah. I'm going to go back to work okay. part time. I'm going to go back because my sick note finishes on the 15th, but I need to get back. But Do you think some of how you're feeling might be related to that this morning? 
I don't know. I don't. I was trying to remember when I had these sort of feelings before, and I'm thinking when I had really used to have really bad asthma when I was little. Mm, okay, let's have a look. It feels like it's my lungs, and I was thinking I've got lung cancer. I'm dying. Doctor, you know I haven't been in a good place. I'm trying to get better, and it's just hard. My daughter's at grammar school, and she's studying uh, PE, and it tells you about health. It says that the definition of health is to be able to take normal stress in a normal way. Okay. Okay. And I don't, so I'm not healthy. <laughs> Can I get you to stand up for me? <laughs> I'm not healthy, doctor. I'm going to have a listen at the back, OK? Right, it was with Dr O'Donnell. Your appointment was at 4 o'clock. You're late. I did try to ring him, but... And I asked, why are you late? Well, oh, I've had to yeah, walk all the way here and been in pain. Uh, you're Katrina Lily White. She's about 10 minutes late, well, nearly 12. 12 late because she had to walk to the surgery. Are you still able to see her? Or... OK, no worries. Thank you. Right, he will be able to see you, but you will have to wait until the other people have been seen who have been on time. How long is that going to be? I don't know. And he will see you as and when, OK? Yeah, that's fine. Oh. What kind of a driver are you? <laughs> oh, good. Push chair. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Can you, you can you manage? Yeah, yeah that's good. It. We're in. Okay, good. Hello, boys and girls. <laughs> so, what can I do for you? Sorry for giving um, you waiting. No, that's fine. Basically, what it is, I suffer with abscesses and boils. Okay, and where do you get them? Under my belly okay. and on my legs. Okay. And how long has that been going on for? Enough two years now. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. They referred me to um, plastic. Yeah. Had the hospital appointment yesterday. Yeah. But I'm in literally pain. Yeah. And what did the plastic say? Uh, they're referring me to a specialist that deals okay. with deals with this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. And right, just pop yourself over here. So just show me where this is travelling. I see. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. So these are predominantly associated with, um, with, with weight and with excess tissue rubbing on um, other tissue. So you're, because this comes down and it rubs against your lower abdomen and your thighs, it causes friction. And the friction weakens the skin and bugs that normally live on the skin but normally wouldn't cause a problem. Down the bottom. Oh, I can imagine. I can see that you know, there, it is inflamed. Um, do you have any under your arms? No. No, it's, it's all down here, yeah. It's all yeah. down here. Yeah. Right. Stand up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, someone come down, please. Right, come sit down here with Mummy. Good. Yeah, sit there then, good girl. Can I get you to come and lie down on there? Because oh, oh, you were talking serious. about that food sticking, weren't you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Look in your feel it. It's a bit painful there. Uh, okay, that's fine. I'll get you to sit there. You alright? Yeah. Let's just say ah. Uh, ah. Uh, say ah again. Uh, ah. Yeah, it's a bit on the red side. Do you know what? What? Well, saturations are fine. Your chest is really nice and clear. No! Mm. What's happening? So I think it's just a cold, really. But I, th I wonder whether the stress is making everything worse as well, which is why you were getting some of that food sticking symptom as well. Yeah. But let's put it, let, let me put it to you like this. I'm not worried that your chest is too bad at the moment. And of course, I want you to stop smoking. I am. Because that's going to make all of that stuff. Yes. Yeah. Mm. But if I, had, if, I, if I had lung cancer. Okay. What would, what, would I get, be getting food trapped in here? What's making you worry about cancer? Because my dad, my, dad, my dad smoked a lot. My dad was a heavy smoker. Okay. He had throat cancer. Okay. So I got scared last night. At the moment. There's nothing in there that makes me worry about cancer right now. Okay. But of course you're right. If, with the smoking, you've got yeah, the risk yeah. is higher, isn't it? Which is one of the reasons why I want you to stop. Yeah. I mean, I know you've done well, haven't you? And I've given up the Red Bull. Yeah, I'm good. Working, I'm working. Yeah. <laughs> good. I'm working on. I'm working on trying to give up this. I haven't got my patch on today. Did you come to the clinic here? I just yeah, I started okay. and I stopped because I had so much things going on. But I'm now going to be. So you're going to re you restart yeah. it? Okay, yeah. fine. Yeah. So um, in a short time, it is literally just things that like paracetamol and stuff. But I'm going to give you something for the stomach as well. Okay. Is that okay. Thanks. If you think things get worse, then I want you to come back to us. Okay. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Take care. Take care. All right. I'll see you again. You too. See ya. See ya. Bye. 
I think you, you need a combination of antibiotics yeah. at this stage, really. It would be really good, if, from your skin point of view, if you were to avoid all forms of sugar. So no, no sugar in tea or coffee, no sweets, cakes, chocolate, paste. Don't, Just don't eat anything with sugar in. Yeah, do you take any sugary drinks at all? Oh, the only drink I do drink is Harvina. Yeah, it has sugar. And you know, so I can't the, drink plain water. One thing that sugar does is it weakens the immune system and your immune system isn't able to respond as well. Try and steer clear of sugar, because sugar and friction are what, and genetics are what contribute to this kind of situation. Okay. Right. What, no, 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 enough now, come and sit down. Put your trousers up, please. I'm here, I'm here, Albie, I'm here. Yeah. Oh, what are you doing? Stop, leave him. Right, that is enough. No, it's just sometimes children are like that. Whatever it is, because they want to run about and do things. Whatever. Yeah. The best thing to do with children, as you probably know, being a mum yourself, is ignore the behaviour you don't want to see again and reward the behaviour that you wish to encourage. So just, just ignore when they're doing things that you just continue to talk as if they weren't doing it. They'll eventually stop. I know it's hard, yeah, I know it's hard. And the thing is, any response from you is a reward. So even if you give out to them, it's a reward, because they're getting your attention. All right, come on, let's go, let's go home. Bye-bye. Yeah, time to go. Yeah, yeah. Actually, they do very well on ignoring them. Yeah. Thank you. Can I help? Um, I came to see Dr. Moyes yeah. a week ago on Saturday. She sent me out to the hospital for some um, blood tests, okay. X-ray um, to do because I I have this um, disease, mm -hmm. so I was. Um, Eight and a half months off work last year. Right. Eight, eight weeks in hospital, two weeks in intensive care. Gosh, okay. um, something's not right. Consolation Lion Care speaking. How can I help? fatigue again um, I think I'm putting weight on around my midriff again okay which is what I did prior to um, presenting with this in the first right, instance okay. Okay. Um, don't appear to get anywhere near as much oxygen into my lungs as I did so basically I've come back today to try and get some results because I'm, yeah. I'm feeling I'm, I'm yeah I'm starting to rapidly okay. go downhill David was diagnosed with a very rare condition called thrombotic microangiopathy and ended up on intensive care. This condition affects the small blood vessels in our organs, uh, most often the kidney, and causes them in some cases to shut down, which is what happened with Mr. Taylor. Uh, he required dialysis of his blood. Your full blood count was normal, so there's no wrong with it, nothing wrong with the actual blood cells. Um, your kidney tests um, were much in line with the ones you've had before and actually probably your function of your kidney is better than it was. Obviously, I know that I've got kidney damage from mm. the disease, mm -hmm. but in my mind, I'm mm. thinking, have I got other damage? Yeah. You know, so yeah. is, it, is it likely that I have, you know, or is it possible that I have mm. lung damage? And mm. clearly from what I'm yeah. reading, it's a possibility, so. so. Yeah, and you're having some lung symptoms. So I think um, what I'll do is I'll write a letter to the chest clinic and get them to give us a second opinion. And, you know, we can take things from it that way. Okay, that's great. All right. Thank you very much. No problem. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. 
Come in all. Thank you. I said, have a seat just there. You up there? Yes, please, yeah. Thank you very much. Right, so, blood tests. Have you got a good vein for me? I do hope so. <laughs> you're, you're a useless. I just looked the other way. Oh, yeah, we're used to that. That's good fine. Good girl, thank you. Young, <laughs> good young lady. I'll be really formal. Thank you, nurse. Oh, thank you. Don't <laughs> worry about it. It's very common. Right, here we go. Sharp scratch. Well done. You OK? Yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you. Yeah, on the television, I can watch stabbings, killings, mm -hmm. kicking, shootings. If I have a term, it comes out, I look away. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's all right. All right. So give that a really firm push. You may have a colourful bruise on that one. Oh, it's normal, yes. So oh, do you that. bruise? Do you bruise easy? Yeah. OK. Yeah. As soon as I went in, it just ballooned up. Thank you very, very much. Oh, gosh, that's going to be a lovely bruise. <laughs> With pretty <laughs> colours. <laughs> It's been a pleasure to talk to you, thank you. <laughs> All right, give that a week. Any concerns, we will write to you. I've enjoyed meeting you, thank you very and much. And you, bye take bye. care, bye bye now. So, the mole. I have a mole, yes. Yeah. So, we've got this mole on your back, I think. Any bleeding or. I haven't pain noticed any, there? no. Um, I know that mole can be a little bit dodgy sometimes. Yes. So... Any family history of any skin cancers or anything no, like that? No, no, no. I've had one before. Yeah, taken off. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm just, I just got a thing about moles. If you have any moles um, that are either suddenly becoming quite asymmetrical, so they were around and yeah, now are yeah. irregular, um, if you find that they're getting bigger, if you're getting bleeding or itching from them, um, or they're changing colour, yeah. you know, all of those things are quite sort of um, important to keep an eye on. And if they happen, then come and see us. Yeah. And yeah, keep using the sunscreen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Julie, who's our HTA for today. All right, come and have a seat down there on the blue chair. So just remind me, it was the four on the back, wasn't it? And they were starting to crust and catch on things. Right? Five, I think, yeah. yeah. OK, so the idea is the things that you've got, they grow on the surface of the skin like that. Mm. So what we do is we put a needle under here, inject some local anaesthetic under there so that you can't feel any of that. We just slice them off that base and then stick a plaster on the top. That's it. Yeah? They won't come back. Okay, they can come back. Um, they can come back in other places, because that's just to do with mm. skin type. We try our best to make sure that doesn't happen. All right, can we get yourself ready? I'm just going to get the local anaesthetic ready. OK. That should be fine. So you're just going to feel a bit of a sharp scratch under each one when I do it, OK? Mm -hmm. Just one coming now. OK, so that's the four. Why, why do they come on the back, then? Um... They can come anywhere, really. Some people are just prone to them. I mean, the good, the good thing about them is that they, you know, they're almost always benign. Um, the bad news is that you tend to get more as you get older. Nothing particularly sophisticated, really. It's just sort of scraping it off. Mm. Not feeling anything sharp, right? Mm -hmm. Usually the sound is worse than it actually is. Mm. All right. All right. That's it, all done. So keep it dry for a couple of days. And then Karen is normal. All right, all right. take care, see you later.
you have that whole northern southern divide in your house for the accents? We call them pants. Yes, I have that in my house. Uh, and you call them trousers. I asked uh, Margaret, and Margaret was like, I've got trousers on here. <laughs> yeah, and do you call pants like underwear? No, I'm in it's just weird. Oh, God. Hello. Hello, Doctor. Come on in, Leslie. Thank you. So I've been reading letters about you, yeah? Oh, you got a few. I've got some, yeah. So you went to the blackouts clinic. And yes. was there a cardiology letter I got this morning? You should have a cardiology, uh, uh, respiratory and a blackout. Wow. Leslie has been diagnosed with bird fancier's lung, which is an allergic condition. Um, it can be triggered by bird feathers, by animal fur, by quite a lot of things. In his case, we think it was probably um, bird-related. At one point, Leslie was keeping up to 500 birds. <laughs> what is it that you're scared of? Oh. <laughs> In the past, Leslie's been very anxious about his health and that's sometimes made it more difficult to treat. Shall we start with the respiratory? Right. Uh, they were quite happy with you, weren't they? Yes, I think so. CT scan looks OK? Yes, they've got... Nothing they've got, nasty going on? No, as far as they're concerned, it looked, it looked good. I'm getting better sleep. Yeah. Got a better mindset. Feeling more... i got a better mindset at the moment because after waiting 18 months with nothing being done, it's at least something being done at the moment. And you know that, that things like your lungs, you may reach a stage where they say, this is probably as good as we yeah, can get. As I said to you before, I didn't expect it to be any better. I just want to know that it's, well, yeah. it's got worse or it's still the same. And when will I be seeing you again? Well, shall we wait until you've had some of these tests done now? Well, right. Yeah? So when you've had the angiogram, when is that? A week today. A week today, yeah. OK. So if I see you a couple of weeks after that, okay. that'll, yeah, that'll be fine. gives time for them to get a letter I'll, to I'll, me. I'll put an uh, appointment at the end of the you month. You can squeeze me in with all your okay. other appointments, yeah? <laughs> it's very satisfying to see Leslie in better health. He's breathing better, his mood has improved. He's just generally more cheerful. Thank you very much, Dr. No problem. I say good to come in and find I'm not as bad as I used to be. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Musa Siddiqui. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. Come and take a seat. Your mum, yeah? Yeah. Lovely. I just bring up Musa's files. And Musa is 13 years old. Yeah. 13 and a half. Lovely. How can I help? OK, so he's been having um, problems with his right ear for a few weeks now, and he constantly feels he needs to pop his ear. Um, and any recent travel on a plane? Nothing. No, so hasn't. just started with what, a bubbly sound? When you, like, don't unpop it, um, it hurts even more when you pop it. Yeah. But, like, if you just keep constantly popping it, it doesn't hurt. And have you had any trauma to that ear? Have you had a hit to the head or anything at all? No. OK, and have you had any water that's gone into that ear recently or done any swimming recently? He hasn't done swimming, but he does have showers a lot. That's what I was thinking, maybe, but whether that's mm. normal or what. OK. So sometimes you can get this thing called eustachian tube dysfunction. That's the tube, the eustachian tube, that connects your throat, your ear, nose and throat, basically, and it can get blocked with phlegm. So the outside of the ear, and then there's an eardrum, and then, which is that thin flap, and then you get the middle ear, and you have to constantly make the pressures the same by doing that popping sensation that you're doing. Let's just do your temperatures and things. Any, uh, no swelling or any pain behind the ear or anything like that. OK, let's have a look in the normal ear. So you've got some wax in this ear. There's a couple of little hairs, actually, right at their back. But the eardrum's intact and it's shiny. I think it's a little bit white, so a bit of fluid behind the eardrum. Um, but actually, the eardrum's intact. It hasn't popped or burst or anything like that. There's nothing nasty in there. Because he's 13, I think we should try the spray and the eardrops to help alleviate this popping sensation. If you do have any mucus in the nose, blow it out, try to get it out, because it can get stuck. There you go. Thanks. Lovely. Thank there you, you go. Thanks Cheers, a lot. bye. Thanks very much.
Yeah, I'll go to lunch at one. I've got, co I've got cottage pie. You've got cottage pie, love? Yeah, cottage pie. Cottage pie? Cottage pie. Ooh, I want cottage pie. What's cottage pie? It's got mashed potato and, um, like, minced meat underneath it. Is it because it's made in a cottage or something? Yeah. And the shepherds make the, shep the shepherd's pie. The rich one's lamb and rich one's beef. Beef. Shepherd's pie's lamb. Oh, shepherd's pie's lamb cottage, cottage pie is the beef. Pie. Hello, it's Dr. Hyder. Come and have a seat. And how are you? Not too good. <laughs> What's been happening? I've been getting pains. OK. And um, it, it's been going on for a long time. That is, I get loose bone motion. OK, all right. Um, but the pain is really bad, and sometimes I don't feel like eating, but I've got to eat because I'm on tablets. Yeah, so what's happening with your bowels? Are you loose or are you constipated? No, loose. Loose. OK. Any blood in the poo? I never know. I never look. I just go and that's it. Right. But, um... So see... how long has it been loose for, do you think? Mm, for a while. And I've also lost weight. Yeah. Um, how long have you noticed the weight loss for? Mm, about a month. About a month. OK, yeah. all right. And then the change with your bowels, how long has that been? Mm, about six months, I suppose. OK, so that's quite a long time, six a long months, time, isn't it? But... Yeah. And then the pain, for how long? Mm, about a month. About a month yeah, as well? It's not, okay. yeah. And appetite? Can you I'm not really fancy anything. And the weight loss, how much weight have you lost, do you think? I was a size, size 22, 22 and I've gone down to 20. Right. And even these jeans are 20 and they're loose. OK. Has anyone else mentioned that they noticed that you've lost yeah. weight? Yeah, my friends at work. Hi, you guys. Uh, have you got any appointments? No, I need okay. stronger tablets. Uh, I've been given a of course, I'm in agony here. Right, I can put you on telephone triage. But I, I've got to go work after, so I just need to repeat the Yeah, I know, but I, I can't... I've got nothing I can book you Well, can you not ask the doctor just to give me more tablets? I ain't sleeping on an hour night and I'm in concern now. I'm going to go and speak I to the doctor now. Do, I'll go Thank and ask you. somebody, OK? Thank you very much. What I'm going to do then, swap the naproxen for a slightly different anti-inflammatory, because it's not doing you as it should do, and I'm going to increase the diazepam just so you can add some relief. Take a seat there. Let me have a quick look. Does it look small? Is this one here? It doesn't look as much as it sometimes does and doesn't, this one here. Yeah. I'm um, just having a look. See, the triggering occurs yeah, not in here, no. but it occurs down in here. Exactly. And it's just about there, where it's happening. So a little nodule almost that can you goes feel it through. Here? The... Yeah, you can feel that. So the injection goes in down here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so these probably cause those injections, is it? Is, that something, is it something the doctors like to give out or not really, or just? Uh, it's a treatment like anything else. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's appropriate for some people and not for others. Like anything, there is a failure rate. But I think you know, hopefully this will reduce the inflammation, and we'll see how we do it. And you know, and if we tried a few of them and it's not effective or it's getting worse. Yeah, then there's an operation that, that can be done. But, you know, you don't want to go down that line if we can stop it with something else. OK, mate? OK, that's it over there. OK, a little prick now. Sorry. <laughs> it's always tender. Well done. Let's pop that there. Yeah, lovely. Lovely. Thanks for the pain. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Happy days, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Should I put the money in there? Or? Yes, please, if you wouldn't mind. Thank you very much. Thank you for your support. Is there any stress at work at all? No, I, won't. I have been under stress. Oh, have Because my sister, I lost my sister. Oh, no, I'm sorry to hear that. Mm. But I'm feeling very tired at the moment. Is yeah. it OK if I examine you? Yeah, that's fine. I need to examine your tummy just to feel that, and we need to examine the back passage as well, if that's OK. It involves inserting a glove finger into the back yeah. passage, and I'll tell you what I'm doing, so it won't be anything you're not expecting. Yeah. OK. Christine has a family history of bowel cancer and also presented with several months of loose motions and had some abdominal pain and weight loss, which was worrying. And where is the pain at the moment? It goes in my belly button. OK, so it starts up at the top and then yeah. I'm just gently going to press on your tummy. See, that's tender there. That is, sorry. Oh, that is tender, isn't it? For the 
that passage examination, if you just lower down the bottom bits, I'll give you a moment to do it. <laughs> Can I come through again? Yeah. I've got some cold gel on a gloved finger. I'm just going to have a look at the area to start with. It looks a bit sore. Sorry. Can you take a deep breath? Sorry about this. Ooh, sorry. <sighs> I'll let you get dressed and then come and have a seat when you're ready. Okay. There's no blood and everything inside feels normal. OK, thanks. <laughs> come and have a seat when you're ready. OK, so from examining you, you are a little bit tender still in the tummy, aren't you? Yeah. Um, the back passage examination was normal, yeah. apart from it's a bit sore on the outside. The yeah. skin looks a bit red, and that might be because you've been having the diarrhoea for so long. Yeah. But because you've had the weight loss and you've had a long history now, six months of the diarrhoea, I think it's worth referring you to get this all checked. Yeah. And I think we need to do it urgently on, on a, what's called a cancer two-week weight referral. Okay. okay. So I don't want you to be alarmed by, no. by that, but the letter will come in the post. It'll be within the next two weeks, and the appointment will be within the next two weeks as well. Yeah, that's fine. If there's anything abnormal on the results, I would normally contact you. If they're all OK, I wouldn't. But if you've had your appointment with the specialist and you still know better and they say everything's OK, still come back in and yeah. see us. More than one in three people will develop cancer at some point in their lifetime. Thank you. If it's not you directly, it will be a member of family, friends, one of your colleagues. We're all affected by it. So where's she having her hair shaved off? Here. Right here. Right here. Get the Uber out. <laughs> it's a big shock when one of your colleagues develops cancer and one of our colleagues at reception, Glenda, developed ovarian cancer. When is the Great British Shave Off happening? One o'clock. Out here? Yes. Yeah. I went shopping yesterday. I thought, oh, I don't need shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> Alison, who is our reception manager, has arranged a charity head shaving event in support of Glenda. For a woman to actually shave their head is a big, big thing. I think so, anyway. It wasn't till the day of Alison's head shave that it hit home to me that I actually had gone through cancer. I hope I'm back soon <coughs> to get you all in shape. Reception, yeah. And let's shave. Well done. Wow. It tickles. <laughs> <laughs> My head feels like my old man's now. <laughs> I know, yeah, it's quite nice, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Proud of you. You're welcome, my darling. The support I've received from the surgery has been very important to me. They've been in touch constantly, looking forward to having me back as a team member, and that's really been important.